My days working, taking care of my little ones can be a lot. I checked out care.com and it was so easy for me to find local, experienced, and background check sitters. Finding our babysitter was way more affordable than I thought. Care.com makes it super easy. Search for qualified candidates. You can view their profiles, read reviews and ratings, check their availability, send messages directly, get the help that you need. Care.com should be every person's go-to. Welcome to the PowerCat Podcast, GoPowerCat.com's Kansas State Athletics Show. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, from the GPC studios, here's your host, GoPowerCat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to this special edition of the PowerCat Podcast, a breaking edition of the podcast. Tim Fitzgerald and Zach Carlson here in the GPC studios in my home. As Kansas State has announced... Jerome Tang is the new basketball coach for the Wildcats, a six-year deal starting off at $2.1 million. Not bad work if you can get it, and it wasn't easy for Jerome Tang paying his dues 19 years at Scott Drew's side down in Waco, eventually growing into a highly, highly respected assistant coach, one that many thought was destined for not only a head coaching gig, but head coaching greatness. We will see how that works out. There's so many that go, so many things that go into success as a coach and fortune and and uh, good luck or a lot of it. But he's also a tenacious recruiter, a very religious man, and everyone in around Baylor that I've spoken with has said you are going to love this dude because he's one of the best guys you will ever meet. Jerome Tang becomes Kansas State's new coach, but it doesn't sound like the press conference will be anytime soon. Maybe on Thursday. Details will follow. I thought probably it'd be tomorrow. Zach, you a little surprised by a Thursday press conference? Maybe a little bit, but I, I, I don't really know any and reason why they wouldn't do it tomorrow. It but did say open to the public, right? I don't think so. I, hold on now. If it's open to the public, how are they going to fit that many people in the Shamrock Zone? Well, it's got a bar. You can pack people in a bar. Let's see. Tang will be formally introduced to the public. During a news conference on Thursday. So, no. Introduced to the public. Right. Stay away, people. Open. The bar will not be open. It'll be, it's weird to have it in there. Why are they having it in there? I know it's part of Bramlage and it's part of basketball, but there is a nice theater set up for press conferences in the football. Probably because the Legends Room was historically the press conference room for coaching changes. And years ago, that's where Bruce Weber was introduced in the Legends Room. Very interesting. Give me your thoughts on the hire. I like it. I mean, you can't get Brad. Um, I don't think that there's ever been an assistant hire, at least recently, that I feel like pretty much the whole fan base is happy with. You know, you look at Mark Adams, Texas Tech, uh, Mike Boyne, Oklahoma State. Now you got Jerome Tang. You know, Big 12's upgraded assistants, you know, recently Mm -hmm. and fairly frequently. Um, You know, everyone likes this hire. I I feel better about those two, you know, Mark Adams, Mike Point, and I feel a lot better about Jerome Tang than I did those. And and I'm really optimistic for the future of K State basketball. I'm too. Um you know what's funny about this is when we started the process, Jerome Tang was on our hot board. And then we started talking to people close to Baylor and they pointed us in other directions because they had not heard Tang involved at all with K State. That quickly changed. And it probably quickly changed because Gene Taylor got with his um, consultants and that name came up. They did research on him, and um, we quickly heard that not only was he now being considered, but he was very high on the list. I uh, my sense is, and I haven't spoken to him, that Gene Taylor and Jerome Tang hit it off. And, and here's why: if you've been around him a little bit, he's kind of got that calm, cool, and collected Chris Kleiman feel about him. It just kind of feels like a Gene guy. And you know, people have brought this up. I think those two will be a really good pair for your kind of lead two coaches too. I think they'll uh, probably have a lot in common and probably work closely together on anything that needs to happen. Jerome Tang uh, really is a great story in the way he uh, really was underqualified to be at a big 12 institution when he moved there. I mean, he's moving from a Christian school to, to help out Scott Drew and um, you know, Scott Drew was underqualified to be a head coach at that point. 
but they literally grew into the job as they went. They had like an eight-year window to fix Baylor basketball because if you're not familiar with what happened to Baylor basketball, I'll let you go Google that or duck, duck, go it. It doesn't roll off the tongue the same. Duck, duck, no. go it. Um, it was uh, just a murder involved with the program and NCAA violations, and it was a mess. And it was literally, you know, the, just a start over, just a relaunch of basketball at Baylor, and it was going to take a while, and it did take a while. And now they are a national power. Yes, they exited the tournament in the round of 32 this year after having a couple injuries that really affected their way their team played and it seems to be a big story of this NCAA tournament but they won the national title last year and I think that elevated Jerome Tang's status from interviewing for jobs like UTEP to being uh, another big 12 institution after him and K-State was not the only institution after him but from what we are told Jerome Tang focused in pretty quickly on Manhattan and Kansas State as his choice according to one source Jerome Tang made it very clear, and he has a quote about this in the in the press release. He knows the history of K-State basketball. He knows the history of K-State basketball coaches, and he knows what the team's about right now because exactly. naturally he does. That's my point. He's played against Nigel Pack, Nigel Pack five times. He knows everything he needs to know about Nigel Pack's game, and that's, you know, that's his hour one of being in Manhattan on the job is talking to Nigel Pack saying, hey, you know, I'm here for you. You need to be here for me. You know, let's make this work. Let's, you know, let's win some basketball games. I think that's the number one thing he has to come in to do. And hiring an assistant or even, you know, it doesn't matter if he's an assistant, head coach, whatever. He's played K-State five times the last two years. Right. He knows exactly everything about everyone's game. You can't say that, you know, about Brad. And Well, I mean, they played Brad Underwood this year, but. You know, right. he, they played him one time. You know, he doesn't know that much about K-State. Jerome Tang, he's probably scouted K-State at least a couple times. You know, he knows the ins and outs of this roster right now and what he needs to do to make this team successful next season. And if you followed along at GoPowerCat.com, particularly if you're a subscriber, so you were seeing all of our coverage behind the paywall, you knew where this was going. You knew the status with Brad Underwood um, and the fact that, I felt good about my information on Brad that it was going to be really hard to land this plane. And that's exactly what happened. And it's not just about a buyout or a salary. It's about the financing of an entire basketball program and how it impacts Kansas State, impacts maybe the football budget. All of those things got very complicated. But I want to compliment Gene Taylor for really, really trying to make it work. You know, and it was going to be probably stressful in a budgetary way to Kansas State Athletics if they had been able to pull it off, and it just didn't work. And Brad's a very good friend, and he's heartbroken, but also understand this, and this is true of any profession. When you like your boss, you tend to stay in your job. Zach's kind of an outlier in that, but Brad sincerely likes his AD at Illinois. They support basketball not just financially, which is at an incredible level, to be real honest, but also vocally and, you know, has his back, even though they got bounced out of the round of 32. I'm confident Brad Underwood's going to be a Final Four coach at some point. He just has to hit the right connection, uh, the right collection of players, and he had a point guard injury this year that really knocked him off course. And as he said to me, it was our glue. So um, it, it's just the way basketball is. God, I love March, though. I mean, I, I'm up so much later last night than I wanted to be watching TCU and watching how hard Jamie Dixon has his guys playing. It reminded me of the Dobermans. I mean, they're at, they're getting after Arizona. They should have won the game. They should have. They should have been at the free throw line shooting free throws with almost no time left, but a referee swallowed his whistle on a tackle at midcourt. It was awful. I, the refereeing is just trash. It's just complete trash right now. But I want that back. I want to see that kind of leave the leave the court with everything out there, including blood. I mean, you know, they're spilling blood out there. They're they're playing so hard. Maybe they got a little too carried away once in a while celebrating. In the Big 12, they would have gotten 13 technicals because they were happy about how they were playing. But uh, they let them play a little bit too much at times in that game. But that's what I want back for K-State basketball. I want that kind of passion, not only from the team, but from the fans, because the fans are, were done. They were. There's just no way you can argue anything else when you looked at Bramlage Coliseum this year, they wanted to move on. And Gene Taylor knew, Zach, he had to make a hire 
that was going to spark the fan base. And they were worried about hiring an associate head coach from Baylor. I mean, there was some concern. Would this do it? And I think they quickly found out from the reaction of the fan base, yeah, yeah, the the fans are bought in. They're excited. And uh, I'm excited to meet him in person. I am too. I, I think that, you know, it, it – Making an uncontroversial hire, I think, was was key here. I think that everyone's bought in. You know, Brad was obviously number one, but you know, for for being an assistant coach and being an assistant coach at Baylor of all places, and having this much of a positive reaction, I wouldn't have anticipated it probably even a year ago. Um, but you know, it's a good thing to see, and yeah, like you said, I'm excited to meet him. And I have talked to Jerome Tang in the past, but just in passing. You know, the courtesies in the tunnel. And I, we might have talked to him in Kansas City. We're still not sure who it was we talked to. It was a very strange situation on, what was it, Friday? Friday. I think it was Jerome Tang. It may have been his brother. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It was so strange. We're still not sure if it was him. I don't think it was him. But he's got a doppelganger from Baylor because they're in Baylor stuff. Well, one of the things I'll, I'll ask him on the side. I won't ask him at the press <laughs> conference. Now the attention turns to maybe the coaching staff and some of the uh, how he'll keep the roster together. And naturally, we won't know much about that until it actually starts to take place. We do think now with the Thursday press conference, it's entirely possible he might have some news on a, on some of his coaches. Will Shane Southwell stay? Will he be bringing in all new guys? It's all very valid points. And we do have a story up at GoPowerCat.com by the time this podcast is released from our own Ryan Wallace doing research into the available candidates out there. What's intriguing is he's he said on a YouTube video that was like a mock interview that if he got a head coaching job, he'd want a veteran former head coach at his side. And that's kind of got people spun off in different areas trying to make connections. We'll see. You know, that was a few years old. We'll see what happens now as he's really kind of cut his teeth as his own style of coach. He's a defensive guy first. That's What's intriguing to me is he played a big role in that zone defense Baylor played for so many years and the conversion to the man-to-man that's been so effective and helped them get over the hump and go to the next level at Baylor. Uh, But we will uh, certainly stay on top of who the assistant coaches are. And I could start listing names, but nobody's going to recognize it. It'll all be for our subscribers at GoPowerCat.com. You might want to subscribe right now and, and get behind the paywall because I'm really proud of our staff. I thought we were all over this. I thought we we had ushered our our subscribers, you know, through the steps of what's going on with Brad. And I know there was a lot of talk about it, it was a done deal. Like it, trust me, I know a done deal is never a done deal until it's done. And I've been there, experienced that. So uh, it was never quite done, and um, it never quite got over the the goal line, so to speak. I love Brad Underwood. I wish he was going to be the coach, but I couldn't. I wouldn't be more excited right now if it was Brad. I think Jerome Tang is a quality dude, and and when you talk to people at Baylor, that's all you hear is the players love him, the his coaches, coworkers love him, fans love him, um, and I think the students are going to really buy in, be part of the Tang gang. Anything else, Zach? I think you've spelled it out, man. Nothing. That was a quickie. We'll, we'll be all over this at Go Power Cat. Some of it will be in, you know, in forward facing up outside the paywall uh, for everyone to enjoy. Certainly, my daily deliveries. There's one up right now uh, that was taped last night prior to the hire being official. We've been waiting all day for it, and it came out at 1:30 p.m. And uh, here we are. Jerome Tang, the new basketball coach at Kansas State, press conference on Thursday at the Shamrock Zone for the media, and we will be there on hand, and I will probably have a walk and talk because I'm going to have to leave. I might as well walk and talk. That's, that's what they're about. We'll have a podcast later in the week. Stay tuned at Go PowerCat. Thank you for listening to the PowerCat Podcast. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. PowerCat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com. Get in on the action with the world's largest sports book. Right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa is where the pros play. Enjoy the highest limits, lowest takeouts, competitive betting menus, and the best customer service. 
Now you can download, fund, and bet like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. Circus Sports Iowa. Sports betting the way it should be. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com for details.